just let Hassan to Sam. Nice to see you again. Good to see you. Our new plans on, on our Kupari close cooperation in many different areas and now we have the opportunity while you are here. Going to other countries in Europe? <laughs> been looking forward to this event because as you all know after the viewers watching online thank you for tuning in and therefore I'm delighted to say that two prominent African foreign minister Dr. Mudavadi has been a central political figure in Kenya for decades former minister of finance all over the world the US Europe China and of the truth is yes there has been a difference in engagement now what is the nature of this engagement what is the structure of this engagement becomes the very important issue that uh, my colleague, the Minister for Foreign Affairs, is raising here. Because the question is, is this engagement having the necessary impact? Um, uh, is it just growing in terms of numbers but skewed towards uh, one, one uh, part of the globe, that is the U Europe or, or Denmark for that matter? Or is it also having that impact that it should have uh, on the African uh, uh, continent? For instance, Kenya has just finished the, um, the agreement, the EPA, European Partnership, uh, I mean Economic Partnership Agreement. Um, the first for us, the first uh, perhaps in Africa, if, if, if I'm not too wrong. Now the question is, can we then move to the phase of proper implementation yeah. mm. and uh, we appreciate uh, that this is a milestone because the EU Parliament has endorsed this agreement with an overwhelming majority but can we now implement it um, can we see the benefits of that that agreement because if you look at the trade numbers uh, they are still very grim comparatively to what comes to Europe and and what uh, the African uh, continent uh, gets in terms of their trade balances. So, so there is an issue there, um, and and I think um, with this strategy, if um, it's going to yield a structure of engagement that has even greater impact uh, in the livelihoods and helping the African countries get out of poverty and crisis, then it will make uh, a, a lot of sense. And therefore it's an initiative that uh, needs to be looked at and anchored. I was trying to pick some details out of the, uh, what you'd call just some statistical data. What, for instance, in the last few years has the US Congress uh, set aside to deal with issues of conflict and war and how much has actually gone to actual intervention when it comes to poverty alleviation or trade or serious uh, mm. uh, programs and the figures are scary uh, it shows that these conflicts, these global conflicts, are sucking 
the resources away from the targeted areas which would make a very big difference whether in education, health, or food security, uh, the conflicts are sucking the resources out of out of everybody. And, and therefore, one of the things that we need to ask ourselves is to what extent can this partnership, this strategy that we're putting in place, um, be structured so that we can get more resources going to actual production as opposed to conflict. Mm. We need uh, on a bigger scale uh, to work with our partners like Denmark so that we can have a re-engineering of that, that space. And the fourth and maybe final point I would bring out is the need to continue looking at the international financial architecture. Um, uh, Africa is saddled with uh, a lot of debt and it's choking uh, the ability of governments to be able to deliver uh, uh, goods and services uh, and needed development uh, to their people. So, so the whole idea is to re-engineer so that access to finance can be broader and also uh, more affordable. Uh, that is uh, literally concessionary. And Kenya, through President Ruto, uh, in conjunction with the World Bank, are hosting uh, an IDA 21 replenishment. IDA 21 is the concessionary window of the World Bank to support uh, the less developed countries. Uh, and this is a big opportunity in, at the end of April this year uh, for this convention. It's, it's going to be at high level, heads of state level. Uh, we hope Denmark can uh, participate and it will also be a good platform for Denmark to pronounce itself on its new strategy for Africa. Not to solve the U Ukrainian war, but because it proves a point that we haven't engaged enough on an equal platform. And I think one important thing, even though it's pretty banal, is the fact that we shouldn't look at Africa as Africa. We have this very famous Danish child song, <laughs> Africa, Africa, yeah, and it goes like, Africa, the country all kids know. And you know, Africa is not a country. Mm. Africa is a continent which consists of 54 different countries. And they are not on an equal footing. I mean, some of them are prosperous countries, as Kenya is an uh, anchor of stability in the region. Others are facing severe security problems and problems when it comes to democracy, etc. the whole Sahel region. So a part of this is looking at the continent Africa in a much more nuanced way. Mm. And if you do that, you will realize that, that there is also from a business perspective huge potential in, in some countries and perhaps not in others. And that's why we need this more holistic um, approach, which is the core idea behind this new uh, strategy. Mm. Many other reasons as well. Uh, I will try to be uh, brief, but look at the demographic. I mean, when one-fourth of the total population on this earth will be an African in 2050, and one-third of all youngsters. And we are talking about a continent close to our continent, like 14 kilometers, I mean. Then there's no doubt that we will be witnessing lots of Africans on our continent in like 20, 30, 40, 50 years from now. We just have to decide in what capacity do we want to welcome them. As partners, business partners, students, or as, for instance, climate refugees. So. It is in the interest of humanity, but it's also in our own pure interest from a security point of view that we engage in Africa. Africa is just developing so quickly, and there is a huge, huge potential. Six out of ten of the world's fastest growing economies will be seen in Africa. The largest 
free trade bloc will also be in Africa. And as everyone knows, the continent has huge resources, natural resources, wind and sun as well, and very uh, unique conditions for what we call green hydrogen, which is a key if we need to reach global uh, climate goals. This African potential, we can say the world and Africa itself needs this potential. We have lots of Danish companies who can help to realize this potential. And just very bluntly put, in Europe, we need a lot of the energy that Africa can produce so that we can become free of Russian energy. So we're in a place where we really truly need each other. Africa and Europe are not just neighbors. They are very closely linked, actually interwoven with each other in many ways. And in many ways, it is our fates that are connected. So what one party does deeply affects the other. Almost a year and a half ago, we were sitting at Marienborg, uh, the Prime Minister's residence, and we um, were formulating a new policy, and we chose with open eyes to give Africa a much greater place, larger than we normally do, and we have a clear ambition. So Denmark and Europe have to engage much more in Africa, but we need to do it in a new way. The foundation must be strong partnerships. The most important words are respect and equality. So we need to base our collaboration on the fact that the international community will be strengthened if Africa comes to hold a stronger role. So with these high ambitions, uh, we need to create the results that are needed because there are many millions of women, children,